Welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be adding the currency labels to our simulator. As always, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game files that I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. So hop in directly in the studio. The first thing we're going to do is create the currency holder GUI. So we're going to go into the starter GUI and add a brand new screen GUI to this. Now we're going to change some properties of this. First of all, we do not want this to reset on spawn. And for the Z index behavior, we want that to be set to global. Next, we'll rename this from screen GUI to currency currency, then we'll add a frame to this. Now let's make sure that we just adjust the size so that it's set to scaled. So 0.1 comma 0 comma 0.1 comma 0. And now that's set to scaled. So when we're using scaled, it will scale for all devices, including mobile. And we can see that right here. Next, we want to adjust the position. So we're going to set the anchor points Y to 0.5. And then also the Y of the position, we're also going to set that to 0.5 as well. So that appears on the left side in the middle of the screen. Now we're going to be using a plugin called auto scale light, which you guys can get for free. There's a link down below in the description. And the reason that we're going to use that is because we want to click on our frame and then we want to click add constraint so that it adds a UI aspect ratio constraint to our frame. This will also help keep the GUI compatible with all different devices. We'll then add another frame inside of this frame and we'll rename this to our first currency, which is going to be called clicks. Now the sizing of this doesn't actually matter because we're going to be using a UI grid layout because we're going to want to have two frames, one for our click currency and one for our gem currency. And we're going to want them to be the exact same size. That's why we're going to use a UI grid layout so that we can make sure that they're all the exact same size and play with the positioning and stuff like that. So inside of the UI grid layout, we're going to set the cell size to 1, 0, 0.5 comma zero. The reason that we're setting it to 0.5 for the Y is because we want it to be half the height of the Y. And then for the padding, we're going to set it to zero comma zero comma zero point zero five comma zero. So we want it to have a tiny bit of spacing on the Y aspect and we can duplicate this just so we can see that as well. And we could also make the background transparency of the main frame one so that we can actually just see these two frames right here. Now those look a little bit small. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete the UI aspect ratio and then modify the size of the initial frame from 0.1 on the X to 0.172 on the X. And then for the Y, it's going to be changed to 0.192. And now we can see both these frames are much larger and they actually look like they're pretty good sizing. So then we're once again going to go back into the plugins and add a constraint to this so that that looks all good. Then we're going to delete the extra clicks frame because we only want to have one for right now. Then for the background color, we're going to want sort of a darker blue. So we're going to go with 92, 129, and 165. And that looks good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a UI corner into this because we want the corners to be a little bit rounded. And we want to make sure that we adjust the corner radius to scale so that it works for all devices. So we're going to say 0.2 comma zero. And now that adds a little rounding to the corners. Now, as we can see with their GUI, they actually have a little bit of a drop shadow effect on their GUIs, and it's not too hard to do this. What we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this clicks frame right here and put the duplicate inside of it, and we'll rename this to shadow. Next, we need to make sure that we adjust the size, and we're going to set it to scaled 1, 1, so that it scales the entire width and height of the parent frame. And then for the position, we actually just want to move it down on the Y axis slightly. So we're going to set the Y scaled to 0 0.075, and now we can see it's moved down a little bit and then we also have to change the background color and all we're going to do is simply drag the slider down a little bit and that's going to basically keep the same color while just making it darker and now we can see that this whole thing has changed but what we have to do is we just have to adjust the z index to zero so that the z index is lower than its parent frame and now it appears below this frame right here so now we can look at it and we can see that there is a little drop shadow effect coming from that frame which looks pretty good the most important thing to consider is that you keep the ui corner inside of here and you keep the size all the same as the parent frame otherwise the shadow might might not look or might not match your parent frame. That's why we just duplicated this and put it inside of it. The next thing we want to do is we want to add an image label inside of here, and we're going to rename this to currency. Now this image is going to display the actual image of the specific currency that this label is going to have. We're going to go into our toolbox and then sort everything by images so that we can actually search for this. And then we can search for click and we can see this click icon pops up, which actually does look pretty decent. Now, if I was to release this game, I would not keep these icons in my game. We can call these mock icons, which are just sort of placed holders and then we would hire a gfx artist or somebody to actually create these specific icons for my own game so we'll take that image put the url inside of there and now we have that displayed if we want to we can set the background transparency to one but i don't think i want to so i'm going to keep it at zero because i kind of like that white background then we want to adjust the size of this and we want to make sure that it's scaled so we're going to set the x to point 185 comma zero and then for the y we're going to set that to point 75 comma zero just like that and now that actually looks pretty decent then we want to make sure that this is centered on the y so we need to set the anchor point 
point Y to point 5, and also the Y position to point 5 as well, so that's now centered on the Y axis, and then for the X, we want it to be a little bit off of the left side, so we're just going to set that to point 0 0.05, and now we can see that the image is positioned pretty nicely on our GUI. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this UI corner and drag that directly into the currency because we want that to also have the corners rounded as well. Then after that, we are going to add a text label to the clicks frame, and we're going to rename this to amount. Now let's just set the text to something like 100.00M, and then we'll set the text color to white, we'll set the text to scaled, we'll set the font to Gotham SSM, and we might want it to be either bold or black. We'll set it to bold for right now, and let's set the background transparency to one so that we don't see it, and now that looks pretty good. We of course then have to mess around with the sizing. So for the sizing, we're going to go with 0.472 for the X, comma 0, and for the Y, it's going to be 0.5, comma 0, just like that. Then we'll adjust its positioning. We'll set the X to 0.25, comma 0, and for the Y, we'll set that to 0.1, and now that does look pretty good. Let's of course make sure that we're testing this on our mobile view as well so that we can make sure everything's scaled and it's all looking good, which it is. If we wanted to, we could stretch this out a little bit further. It depends on what you want to do, but I think it's fine like that. Additionally, you probably want to set the text X alignment to the left as that'll make it appear closer towards the currency image. If we stretch this out and then set this from left to center, we can see where it'll appear normally. So I think left is definitely better. And then let's also make sure that the sizing goes back to normal. So yeah, we're going to set the alignment to left so that it appears closer to the image. Then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and we're going to rename this to CPS, which stands for clicks per second. Then we're going to adjust this positioning as we want it to appear a little bit lower than our amount text label. And all we have to do is adjust the Y. So we're going to set this to 0.6 from 0.1. And then we want to make it a little bit smaller so that it actually fits within the frame. And I think that's pretty good. We might also make it a little bit smaller on the X as well. And then let's set the text of this too so that we can see what that would look like. So let's say for instance, plus 1.5K slash sec, just like that and see how that appears. And I think that actually looks pretty decent. We can't really enlarge it without making the amount smaller, but I still think that that actually does look pretty decent. If you wanted to, you could drag it out a little bit. It really is up to you. Now that we have that done, the next thing we want to do is we want to add a text button to this as well. And we're going to rename that to buy. Then we're going to set the background color of this to be sort of like a greenish color like that. For the text, we want it to actually just be a plus. We're going to want the color to be white. We will want it to be scaled. For the font, I just set everything pretty much to a Gotham. I think we should make this a black because we want to appear pretty bold. We could add a little bit of a stroke onto it if we wanted to. We can see that if we make it like 0.7, it appears slightly. Depends on how you want to. I think we'll leave it at 0.9. Next, we need to adjust its sizing. So we'll set this to 0.18 on the X, comma 0, and then 0.75 on the Y. Now for the positioning, we want to make sure that it is centered on the Y axis. So we're going to set that to 0.5 for the anchor point and 0.5 for the position. Then for the X, we want it to appear pretty much coming off of its parent frame. So we're going to try to set it to like 0.9. And I think that actually does look pretty good. Next, we'll add a UI corner. So we're just going to duplicate it from inside of clicks and put that directly inside of the button, just like that. And that also looks pretty good. Now this button also has a little bit of a shadow coming off of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this shadow frame, put it inside this buy button. And that looks pretty good, but we need to make sure that we adjust the background color. So we're going to hit pick screen color grab that color right there and then just drag it down to make it as dark as we actually want it to be and now we can see that looks pretty good what we also need to do though is we actually need to adjust the z index of this shadow and set that to one then we need to adjust the z index of the buy button to two because we want this button to appear above the shadow but we also want the shadow to appear on the clicks label as well so now we can see that the shadow is set up perfectly if there's any confusion there you can set this back to zero and then you can see that the shadow is actually only appearing on like the right half of the button so when we set it to one it's now appearing on the entire bun because it's now on the correct Z index. Now, creating our next label is going to be much simpler. All we have to do is duplicate this frame, rename it from clicks to gems. Then we're actually going to delete the buy bun and delete the CPS text label. And then we'll just have to change the currency image. So we can just literally search up gem. And we can see there's a couple of different gem images which appear. So we'll just go ahead, copy asset ID, put the image just like that. And there we go. We now have our gems currency image. Then we want to adjust the amount sizing. So all we're going to do is modify the Y and we're going to set that to 0.6. Then for the positioning, we also just have to adjust this as well, and we want it to be centered. So we're going to set the Y position to 0.5 and the anchor point to 0.5 as well, and now that's centered perfectly. Now we're actually completely finished creating the currency GUI. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and test this out on the mobile device and see how that looks. And I think it looks good. If you wanted to, you could always go ahead and adjust the size of the frame to make them appear a little bit larger, or you can make them even smaller as well. With all that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll begin scripting our point system, which will affect our currency GUI. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video or did help you out, make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe button and turn this post notification on if you want to get notified when we upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, if a Patreon, if you guys like to swear me and you can access all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.